Hi everyone, I'm George Call. I'm um, here to introduce this three-part series called Dream Lake Trail. And um, this is part one of this three-part series. And my um, tutorials are about 30 minutes apart. The difference today is that I'm coming to you on um, YouTube and Uscreen. So I'm encouraging you people that find me on YouTube to journey over to uh, Uscreen and become part of my ongoing tutorials. On Uscreen I have 100 of my very best tutorials and um, encourage you to look at the address below or the link and come on over and take a look. Uscreen is a play, paid platform, $9.99 a month. I mean, hey, that's reasonable. And uh, I'm encouraging you to take a look-see. Okay, what else can I say? I'm only one part of your education on oil painting. The other parts are get outside and paint. Paint with your friends or get into a, a painting group. And get tutorials, and that's important stuff to do. All right, I think that's enough of me, and let's get to today's painting. All right, bye-bye. Hello, everybody. George Call here in my studio in Loveland, Colorado. And uh, today we're starting a three-part series called Dream Lake Trail. This is Rocky Mountain National Park um, in um, Colorado. So that's what we're working on today. And uh, today is block-in, and instead of a more of a horizontal landscape design in computer talk, this is called portrait. So we have um, uh, 14 by 11. So you always say your left-hand side measurement first, and then the horizontal. Today I'm working with a number 7 rosemary filbert and I'm working with a number two flat, and uh, we'll get started. And while we're getting started making a mixture of ultra blue and a little bit of gray and some white, thoroughly mixing that, I'm using a basic palette plus a few extras. This would be ultramarine blue, permanent red uh, medium, lemon yellow, Naples, and cold gray. I'm using burnt sienna instead of raw sienna today, and uh, viridian, and titanium white. Over on my left, I'll probably be using some cerulean for my sky color. So, the key today is not putting a whole lot of paint, thick paint on. We want to go in thin, and that's the way we're going to go, get started today. So, I'm going to start with a, something I can draw lines with, and I'm going to start with my number two flat. And look how I just really light up... Um, get the sides of this thing um, loaded up. So I'm trying to figure out where can I make some foundation lines. I see these angles and so forth, but I think I'm going to choose this one down here, uh, which is kind of more or less flat uh, across the bottom where the trees start. So I'm just going to start there and put that in there. And then from there I'm going to build up. I know there's an angle that stops here above the line and goes up here and then goes to a very steep area and in there. So this is line number two and then over here where this big obelisk goes up here and then this goes over here somewhere There is a lot going on in this rock. So I know that over here is a shadow. And 
There's some shadow patterns here. I think there's one that kind of goes right here. So this is this is shadow, and then there's more sh broken shadows up in this rock here. And let's see, we have a big dark down here. So this is a dark. And then we have a bunch of trees in this area. And I'll probably put a break in there. We have trees coming down here also in this area. But what um, I think makes this um, reference so interesting is we have all these nice shadows. We have the darkest shadow right in front of us. I think shadow number two is here, and the uh, shadow number three is in the mountain. So the darkest is going to be closest to us. Then we have a medium, which is number two. And then the lightest shadow would be number three. This is from my references uh, that I took. This one goes back, I think, uh, some years. But, you know, computers can save all this stuff in the cloud. And you go searching through all this stuff. And you say, why haven't I painted that? And I said, this is the time to do it. All right, so... I'm going to see what I can do about, I have this gray stuff here, so I'm going to see what I can use with that to um, use in the painting. So I'm going to add more blue to it and a little bit of gray. And I'm going to load up the side of this uh, number seven rosemary and I think that this might go well in here and you can see I'm going a little thinner than I normally do and that's what I'm doing and then over here we have more of the same shadow of the same value here and then I'm going to add more blue, more gray. This time I'm going to add a little bit of cerulean. And I'm going to come in here and make another shadow pattern on this big guy over here. So when I identified as shadow number two, so we're doing three, two, and then one. So you see me many times, I'm, I say, if I've got this pile, what can I put in it to go into the painting? It just saves me a little bit of paint and uh, mixing space on my, uh, my palette. I think there's some shadow that comes over into here, too. I'll put that down here. I don't know if I'm getting that right or not. And then I think this kind of goes, this kind of goes this way to show the hill. And then a little straight here. Okay, so you can see I'm putting it in kind of thin. And now let's go to number three. So I'm going to add more blue, more cerulean, more gray. And I'm going to add just a touch of viridian. That's green. I'm going to add a little bit more blue. And let's go into, I think there's some dark shadow here. But more or less this is this dark shadow down in here. Excuse me, I'm going to put my canvas up so I can get the bottom of this down. I had my brush in my mouth. That's why I sounded funny there for a second. So flip your brush around to get paint off of all sides of it. So I curved it a little bit just so it's not flat all the way across. And now I'm going to step back and see 
how we're doing shape wise so far so good okay all right let's go into another phase using this pile of paint that we have let's throw in some more blue and let's throw in some yellow oh geez more blue I'm going to make these, I think, a little bit on the dark side. I'm going to throw in some gray. Still too darn green. I want these a little darker. So I'm going to go blue, and this time a little burnt sienna. I think we're getting into the neighborhood now that we want to be. Yeah, I think that burnt sienna really helped on that last little throw in. Should have got that in sooner. All right, so now I'm loading up my brush. I didn't even clean it in turp. And I'm going to get some of these tree shapes in the right place. I don't know if I'm going to put that rock in or not. This one going in this area right here. Might have some of it, but I kept some really tall trees over here. Might have a space in here so I can see the see the rocks more. I think the difference I'm doing this week is just going in more with dry brush not so much turp or heavier paint. And I think we also have some trees coming down here. I'll just put a line of it like that. So there's a gap right here and here. Some in here too. Now, what I'm going to hope to do here is make this mixture even darker with more burnt sienna, more blue, and I'm going to put in some darks within the trees, which I see in the reference. You can see that really got to be a dark, dark value green, and I'm going to lay some of that in. Okay, that does that. I think I want to step back and see if my trees are high enough. And I think I need some higher trees in this area. And I think I have one that's really tall over here, almost going off the canvas. Just a portion of them showing. And these guys need to be taller also. Tree height fixing. Okay, this time I am cleaning my brush, but I'm really trying to get some of that turp out of there. And I'm going to pick up this green and put it off the side, see if I can use it later. I have misplaced my wonderful long-handled scraper, darn it. I did a demo up in Estes Park on Friday at my gallery that I'm in up there. And you know, when you go on the road, you kind of misplace stuff. The interesting thing about that was being up in Essence Park, I was driving down after dark, and there were these two huge elk came around the corner, coming down not too far from Essence Park, and there they were right on the outside of the white line, and I swerved out to miss them, 
And then I swerved back in and they, they kind of look like, like, what's your problem, buddy? We were on our side of the road. They're like trained elk up there. There's two guys with great big uh, racks. What an amazing place that is. There's so many elk up there. All right, back to reality here. All right, let's make a mixture for the uh, light area in here. And so obviously we have a gray and a white. John, I had some burnt sienna in there. That's too bright. It's too brown. Hang on. What am I doing here? Why did I get so much Prince in it? Let me double check here, see if I can find my gray. Make sure it's it's a pure mixture. Somehow I got some burnt sienna in there. I think this is a little cleaner. Let me see. So what I want is gray and green. Let me get the value right. Yeah, this is cleaner. And a little bit of viridian. Ooh, that's pretty. That's a pretty gray with a little bit of viridian in it. Too much, George. There we go. And now let me make some lighter stuff on one side. Okay. So I have two mixtures. I have a dark and a light. Let's see what happens. And I want to go for the light. I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit more. And don't do what I say, not what I do. I mixed it with my brush. Don't do that. All right, this is good. I think I need to raise the shadow here, so I'll leave some space for that. Just notice that when I did this. Let me bring this out. And I probably need to bring the shadow down more here. And let me get some light in here. Doing on time. Oh my goodness, I better hurry along here. See, Monday morning I'm not in shape yet. I'm still got the weekend stuff. I had a great day yesterday. The weather was so nice here in Colorado. It's like in the low 70s, no wind. So I played golf up at in Fort Collins with my friends to, at City Park 9. I don't know if you guys know Fort Collins. That course has been around forever. And I had a wonderful time. So I was driving back to Loveland, which is south of Fort Collins. And I said, you know, I'd like to play another round of golf. So I pulled in at the old course uh, on 29th and I said, you can you fit in a single? And they said, we sure can. And boy, I played another nine holes with a wonderful guy. And we just had a wonderful day playing golf. So I think I'll, I will put a rock in here, maybe. I might make it darker on the bottom. And then we have to think about some green. So let me, first of all, fill in some of these halos I have around here. All right. Let's get some sh darker shadow in here. I need to see if I can make some shadow out of this color. I added some cerulean blue. And uh, see, I wanted to raise this shadow here, so I added some cerulean blue, and I wanted to Take this one out a little bit farther. Okay, did it. 
All right. Time for green, I think. So I have some of this really dark green. I'll see if I can add some yellow to it. And some Naples and some white. And come up with a lighter green. So I added some more yellow and more white. And I think... So let me go in here and try to wipe some of that gray out of my brush. And get some of this green in here. You can see I'm using much more dry brush technique than I have previously done. And and let's finish off with uh, Ceruleum and Sky. So I'm going to pick up my gray, see if I can use it later. And I think my green is about shot. There's just not that much left in there. And I'm going to get some ceruleum. Too much. Don't need that much. I'm going to get a little bit of viridian. And a lot of white. Move it into one side. And cautiously go in the side of the darker mixture so I don't over dark my light. And I think I've got it. Okay, I've got some green in my brush. I'm going to see if this really screws it up and it does. So I do have to use some turp here. Using my turp, try to get some green out of there and dry this number seven as best as you can. And let's now go into the blue. And it doesn't seem to be contaminated. And let's get that in there. Oh, that's a nice color. People say I'm a fast painter, and actually I think I'm not that fast, but one thing that gave me the speed that I am at, fast, slow, or medium, whatever you might identify me at, was plein air painting. Because I have to paint so quick outside because things are changing so quickly. I have to go down and See, I'm going from top to bottom to try to get some of these halos out of here, and that contaminates my brush. So I have to reload and try to get the contamination out of my brush by wiping it out. And at the same time, I'm getting low on product, on it? What a surprise. And that should be bringing us to lock-in stage. Now I have a few minutes so let me get back and take a look and see what I can see to do in the next few minutes. Okay, one thing I think we'll probably be addressing tomorrow in this is that my grays are not light enough. So I'm going to add more white to my blue sky color. I'm going to add just a touch of gray to that mixture. and lighten it up. Try to get some of the sky color out of here. And lighten it up. What 
would have helped, and I'm going to do it, is pick up some of that lighter gray and try that. Let me make some more mixture. Touch of gray. Too much gray. A little bit of cerulean. And let's try that. Nice! Nice! That is working. Why I didn't see that in the first place, I don't know, but you take your best shot at it and then these secrets are revealed once you start getting your values in that surround it and you're ready to go. Okay, let me step back. Okay, that's much better. So hey, listen y'all, I think we'll bring it to an end. And with that, this is uh, part one of Dream Lake Trail. This is Rocky Mountain National Park, Colorado. Thank you so much, you screeners, and we will see you tomorrow for part two. All right. Thanks for coming by. Bye-bye.